It is my great pleasure to introduce a visionary leader in the field of artificial intelligence. Fei-Fei Li, as you know, is co-director of Stanford's Institute for Human-Centered AI and a professor of computer science at Stanford. She was director of the Stanford AI Lab from 2013 to 2018 before she became um, High's co-director. She also currently co-directs the Stanford Vision and Learning Lab. Between January 2017 and the early fall of 2018, she joined Google Cloud as chief scientist of AI and machine learning during her sabbatical from Stanford. Uh, she focuses her research on machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, and cognitive and computational neuroscience. She's widely published in top tier journals and conferences and is one of the most cited researchers in computer science in her generation. She's also a leading voice advocating for diversity in STEM and AI, and she co-founded and chairs the AI education nonprofit, AI for All. She received a Bachelor's of Science in Physics from Princeton University and a PhD from Caltech. She served on the faculty at Princeton, then at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign before joining us at Stanford. We're honored to have her at the helm of Stanford High. Please join me in welcoming Fei-Fei Li. Thank you, thank you. Wow, welcome. What an exciting day. I want to thank Mark for uh, sharing with us such a uh, fantastic vision for Stanford's future. I know I speak for John and myself, along with so many of our colleagues, students, and collaborators here at Stanford about our excitement for what we're building together. Now, I want to share, begin this talk by sharing with you an experience I had as an undergraduate research intern many years ago. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. I was huddled in a darkened lab with a group of fellow students. Before us was a cat under general anesthesia with an array of electrodes carefully inserted into its visual cortex. We connected the electrodes to a loudspeaker and projected moving lines in before the cat's eyes. Its neurons fired in response and through the speaker, we could hear them. Each crackling sound was a glimpse into the inner workings of a living brain. Together, they played the symphony of a mammalian visual system. The impact of that moment remained with me to this day. It was a recreation of an experiment originally performed by neurophysiologist David Hubel and Torsten Wiesel. Their work was a breakthrough and a true turning point in the field of neuroscience. It laid the foundation of visual intelligence, earned them a Nobel Prize, and provided a blueprint to the neural network architecture that is transforming the world through AI today. And they did it all in 1959. It wasn't just a feat of science. It was a true feat of imagination. It was the same spark of curiosity that drove thinkers from Plato to Descartes to Turing to look inward towards the mysteries of the mind and dare to ask how it works. Where others saw magic, they saw a scientific frontier ripe for exploration. And so, as our understanding of our world pushed ever outward through physics, chemistry, engineering, and even mathematics, our understanding of ourselves reached further inward. Today, we find ourselves surrounded by the product of that imagination. It's an era of connection, information, and technology so advanced that many are calling it the fourth industrial revolution. It's a world that offers opportunity at an incredible scale, but it presents perils as well. Artificial intelligence, a technology that has grown from an academic niche to a global phenomenon in less than a decade, has revealed itself to be both. There's no denying of it. Intelligent machines have the potential to do harm. 
they're susceptible to algorithmic bias, and they raise concerns over privacy, security, and job displacement. These are the pitfalls of AI. They affect real people, and they demand urgent action. As technologists, it's our responsibility to address the failings of our tools. But it's also our responsibility to realize the full extent of their potential. The world of 2019 is extraordinarily complex, perhaps verging on the limits of our own understanding. And we need smarter technology to help us make sense of it. This is the opportunities of AI. Consider climate change. Despite its urgency, we struggle to collect data at the scale and granularity necessary to fully understand it and to coordinate energy saving practices at a society level. Intelligent technology can help. It can integrate data at a global scale from satellite images to electric grid sensors and to even autonomous drones across continuous time and space. And all these can help us optimize the way we allocate resources from data centers to our homes. Then there's healthcare, access to which remains a luxury beyond the reach to so, of so much of the world's population. But AI is already quietly transforming diagnostics as computer vision algorithm turns clinical insight into a low cost technology. Or the sheer burden of information itself, documents, records, and even scanned paperwork on a scale far beyond our ability to process as humans. How much useful knowledge remains undiscovered in this digital clutter? With image recognition and natural language processing methods, document understanding is making it possible to find out. These are stories of how AI can augment its human counterpart, how it can provide backup and support for the ingenuity we naturally possess as the world surpasses our ability to keep up. The question is, can we have the good without the bad? To find the answer, we'll have to imagine on a large, larger scale than any other time in history. And the search will mark the beginning of a new chapter in AI, one that puts the need of humanity at, it, at its center and incorporates a global diversity of expertise, ideas, and perspectives. It's in this spirit that we announce the establishment of Stanford's Institute of Human-Centered AI, or Stanford High. Its mission is to advance AI research, education, policy, and practice to improve human condition. It aims to be a global hub for dialogues, allowing every discipline to bear on the challenges of AI. And it's an invitation to all of you to join us in imagining the future together by committing to three fundamental principles. First, in order for AI to, um, to develop uh, properly, we need to pair it with an ongoing study of its impact on human society and be guided accordingly. Next, the ultimate purpose of AI should be enhanced and augmented by our humanity, uh, should, be in, should enhance and augment our humanity, not diminish or replace it. And to achieve the full potential of AI and for it to better serve our needs, it must evolve to incorporate more of the versatility, nuance, and depth of human intellect. Let's start with the technology itself. AI has devel developed some truly remarkable capabilities in recent years, but it remains light years behind the nuance, subtlety, and flexibility of our own intelligence. 
When an algorithm is driving a car on a crowded street or contributing to the outcome of a parole hearing, fluency in human experience is essential. Let's use the simple photo to illustrate the difference. The most advanced computer vision algorithm today would have no problem identifying there are objects present, such as a dog, a couch, a person, a coffee cup, and so on. But what do we see as humans? Not only can we tell the couch is damaged, but we know the dog is responsible. We can also tell, based on a simple posture, that the owner is not very happy. Perhaps best of all, we can read the look of guilt on the dog's face. And we see it all immediately. This is what our minds do. We recognize context and evoke memories effortlessly and use analogies to understand new ideas in familiar terms. We create associations that can trigger everything from the inside of a hypothesis to a piece of poetry. We sense causal relationships between events, turning a sequence of moments into a story. And in the presence of other mind, a powerful emotional dimension emerges as well. Today's AI is impressive, but the richness of human intelligence remains unmatched. Of course, we recognize that making AI more sensitive to the full scope of human cognition is no simple task. The solution would depend on insights from neuroscience, cognitive science, and psychology, which is why Stanford High is dedicated to fostering collaborations with experts in many of these fields. Now, I want you to join me in imagining what a technology with this kind of depth and versatility might be capable of. For example, the AI of today is transforming medical diagnosis as algorithms make detection of diseases faster, more precise, and more consistent. But this is only the beginning. Put yourself in the shoes of a clinician in a crowded ER. You're surrounded by people who need help, but your first responsibility is triaging the most urgent cases. This may be manageable on an individual basis, but as the crowd gets bigger, your time and effort are spread thinner and thinner. Further complicating matters, every patient communicates in their own way and faces circumstances that you may, not see, you may only see in glimpses. And those needs can change at any time. How might a next generation AI powered triaging system help? Imagine it can speed up preliminary diagnostics by understanding the context of a limb or slurred speech, cross-referencing its observations with the patient's medical records. Imagine that it can make educated guesses about a patient's emotional state based on their face and posture. And imagine it can keep an artificial eye and ear on every patient while they wait, watching for changes of their medical and emotional state and keeping the clinician up to date. And imagine it all works in real time for everyone in the ER. The effect would be transformative. Clinicians would remain face to face with their patients, but with less stress and greater focus. Each interaction would begin with an insightful head start. And in the ER, saving time is often saving lives. From here, it's not hard to imagine a similar application in education in the form of an AI-powered teaching assistant that can monitor class safety, review homework to gauge student comprehension, flag possible strengths and weaknesses in, along the way, and even assisting with the grading process. All the while, the teacher is able to focus on connecting with her students on a more personal and less distracted way. And speaking as an instructor of Stanford's one of Stanford's largest deep learning classes, I can tell you it's really exciting to imagine an endless supply of free AI TAs. 
Even tasks like search and rescue can be made safer and more effective. Imagine low-cost drones being deployed in a disaster area. Imagine how such technology would build a real-time 3D map of the environment, locate people in need, and generate safe, optimal path to help. Such algorithms would, could even share this information with fire departments, blood banks, hospitals, local governments, and the media, empowering first responders and maintaining public awareness. The list just goes on, but the story is the same. As human-centered AI develops the basic skills of judgment and perception that serve us well in simpler times, it can scale them to, to the need of an increasingly chaotic world in all the ways humans can't. In turn, our own abilities can be focused on higher level tasks, safer, less repetitive, more creative, and ultimately more meaningful. Rather than replacing us, it can make us better at what we do. This brings us back to the pitfalls of AI. Now, it's important for all of us to remember that this is a unique time in history, and we are part of the first generation to see this technology migrate from the lab to the real world at such a scale and speed. For the first time, the ethics of AI isn't an abstraction or philosophical exercise. This technology affects real people living real lives. That makes it our responsibility to understand the full impact of this technology, to anticipate the way the world will change in response, and to guide it accordingly. In other words, it's time to make ethics a fundamental part of research and development in AI. Let's start with algorithmic bias and job loss. These are significant issues, and the solutions will take many forms. Some biases are technical, for instance, and can be addressed with statistical methods that can de-bias data sets automatically. But human measures are vital as well, such as greater representation in the tech industry. And when it comes to job loss, while technology can play a big role to reskill our impacted workforce, policy will also be essential in providing options and support for them. But the complexity don't stop here. How, for example, will our law change as AI play an increasingly collaborative role in human tasks? As human specialists rely more and more on machine intellig intelligence, what will become of our notion of accountability? Who is liable when something goes wrong? The time has come for engineers to embrace these questions and for policymakers, legal scholars, and ethicists to help find the answers. Historically, the effect of new technologies tend to reverberate far beyond the capabilities they deliver. The automobile, for example, was simply intended to help us get around faster. But a century later, the entire world has been reshaped by highways, parking lots, and gas stations, not to mention global impact on natural resources and the climate. What will widespread intelligent machines do to our communities? How will they impact our culture? Already, we live in a world that seems to remind us of technology's pitfall on a daily basis. Intelligent technology, for, its, for all its amazing capabilities, will also raise the stakes even higher. These are big and tough questions, and they deserve to be taken seriously. They, they demand we dedicate time resources, and a wide range of expertise to understand this technology, to anticipate the future it will bring, and to guide its course responsibly. And above all else, it is a call for humility. These are the three principles define human-centered AI, 
by ensuring its design is human inspired, its roles in society are human friendly, and its impact is human safe. Now, I'd like to talk about the goals of Stanford High as an organization. Naturally, we aim to promote breakthrough research that advances the state of the art while collaborating with the brightest minds in medicine, law, economics, humanities, and many other disciplines. Next, to encourage an inclusive, ongoing dialogue, Hai is working to establish a global forum for thought leadership that brings together policymakers, academics, business leaders, journalists, and civic society in general. And many of you are already sitting in the audience today. We look forward to candid conversations that confront the toughest questions about our future and keep a global audience informed. HIGH will also work to advance the depth and scope of AI education for its students, as well as promoting AI literacy beyond Stanford campus with outreach programs that train and inform leaders and practitioners in industry, government, and the media. Finally, it's not enough to simply talk about AI. We have an obligation to promote meaningful changes in the real world. This means sharing research and technology with those who can benefit most from it and delivering studies, data, and expertise that shape policy. It's no coincidence that all these are happening at Stanford. The tradition of imagination is alive and well here and has been since the earliest days of AI. In many ways, the first chapter of AI began with the founding of the Stanford AI Lab, or SAIL, in 1963. SAIL is now home for more than 100 AI researchers, students, and visitors, including myself and my students for the past 10 years. It's where some of the foundational milestones of AI history happened, from self-driving cars to computers that can see, from algorithms that help fight cancer to robots that dive deep under the ocean. Now, now we're setting an example for AI's next chapter, its transformation into a multidisciplinary field that extends far beyond the borders of computer science. This is perhaps the single greatest shift in AI's history, and Stanford is the ideal place for it. Our schools of engineering, law, medicine, education, business, humanities and natural sciences, and earth sciences will each play an important role in making AI a diverse human-centered pursuit. But the role of academia is even more fundamental than that. It's where the imagination is truly free. Tomorrow's AI leaders will need to explore every avenue of inquiry, not just those most likely to bear commercial fruits. They'll need the same scientific freedom that fostered global cooperation on endeavors like Large Hadron Collider, not to make our phones faster or Wi-Fi cheaper, but to catch the first glimpse of the Higgs boson. It's easy to let the term artificial intelligence conjure images of automation and blinking servers, but to me, AI is a story about humanity, the human values we want our technology to embody, the people who develop it, and the communities it affects. And this is what gives me hope for Stanford High, more than anything else, the people it's made of. Many of these people are my friends, colleagues, and students here at Stanford already my colleagues in the AI lab and the Stanford Woods Institute, for example, are working hard to better understand global poverty, 
Their model learns how features of satellite photos correlate with income, generating detailed maps of wealth inequality for NGOs and governments. Or my colleagues at the Stanford Computer Science Department and the uh, School of Education helping develop assistive tutoring agents that deliver one-on-one -on -one education to students in underserved community. Or my friends at the Stanford School of Medicine training deep neural network on EEG data to develop novel rehabilitation therapies for stroke patients. This is what human-centered AI look like. And what's even more exciting is there's more of them coming. Just last weekend, a group of newly admitted computer science PhD students came to visit us on campus. This is an annual tradition here at Stanford, and it's an incredible experience every year. These young students come from every corner of the world, energetic, inquisitive, and bubbling with creativity. Their talent is the reason we teach, and their enthusiasm is what compels us to mentor. But something was different this year. From the moment they arrived, I found myself hounded by students who wanted to know more about human-centered AI. It wasn't just the technology fascinated them. They wanted to use it to do good in the world. One student planned to apply natural language processing to sociology. Another was interested in the intersection of robotics, medicine, and the policy questions that raises. One after another, their vision challenged and inspired me. They were compassionate, empathetic, and intensely creative. So the next time you think about AI and what it means for the future, think about people like these. They are a reminder that AI can be more, so much more than money, luxury, or convenience. It can be about a vision for a better world for everyone. This is what Stanford High was founded on, empowering bright minds to imagine the future of AI together as engineers, as scientists, as experts from innumerable, innumerable disciplines, and above all, as humans. Thank you.